Hello everyone. My name is Akash Deep. I am a senior mechanical engineer at Decos, and today I will talk about different techniques that are used in plastic processing by medical device OEMs. Here is the agenda for this webinar. We will look at six different types of techniques. During this webinar, we will look at concepts, types, and application of some of these techniques. Towards the end, I will share the detail about what services we offer in this area. Before we start digging deeper in this topic, I would like to take a quick poll. The poll question must be available now. What do you think which molding process is most used across the globe? The correct answer is injection molding process. Let's look at it in more detail. We will start with injection molding process. Injection molding is a process in which plastic material is melted and injected into the mold to form a product. This is a schematic diagram of injection molding process where on the left hand side we have injection unit and on the right hand side we have a clamping unit injection unit is responsible for injecting the plastic material into the mold whereas clamping unit is responsible for opening and closing of the mold we put plastic material into the feed hopper the plastic material is then inserted into the barrel the barrel is in heated condition there are three zones inside the barrel. The first zone just below the hopper is called feed zone. The next zone after the feed zone is compression zone. And at the end we have metering zone. The feed zone is responsible for receiving the material from the hopper and conveying it further to the compression zone. The compression zone actually compresses the material and is responsible for mixing the material inside the barrel. The material is then forwarded to metering zone where metering zone is responsible for conveying the material from the injection barrel to the mold. This side of the mold is called core and this side of the mold is called cavity. Let's look at injection molding process in sequence. We feed polypropylene granules into the hopper. The material goes into the barrel. The barrel is in heated condition and the screw does the material of conveying the material from the feed zone towards the metering zone. This is how the material is pushed into the mold. Once the mold is filled by the plastic material, cooling of mold will start. Once the mold is cooled, the plastic material is solidified and the product is ejected. Let's have a look on injection molding process stages. In the first stage, we have a clamping where the mold is clamped. Once the mold is clamped, it means the mold is closed. We inject material into it. Once the material is totally injected, we start cooling the mold. The mold cooling is done for the purpose of solidifying the molten plastic material inside the mold. Once the material is solidified, we open the mold and the part is ejected. This is how the injection molding stages are. And this is how these processes goes on. These are some of the types of plastic injection molding process. We will take a look at it. We will see generally gas assisted and plunger type injection molding process 
as only these are the most used injection molding techniques among all. In gas assisted injection molding process, there are three stages required to be carried out in order to make the part hollow from inside. In the first stage, the mold is partially filled with the measured amount of molten plastic material. There are two views in front of you. We have the front view and we have the side view. If you look on the side view, you see in the first stage, the mold is partially filled with the measure amount. It means how much amount is required to maintain a wall thickness of 2 mm or 3 mm. That much material will be measured and it will be injected. In the second stage, the inert gas is injected from the one side. You see the green color is inert gas, which is injected into the mold cavity. In the third stage, more inert gas is injected from the inlet. And after few seconds, when the pressure increases, the exit path for the inert gas exists also open. You see the front view and this view where the gas injector from the gas injector, the inert gas entered and then from the exit part, the inert gas outlet is. When the more amount of pressure is maintained into the cavity, there is a valve which automatically opens out. In this way, the molten plastic material is pushed towards the wall of the mold to take, to, to, to take its shape. And in the middle where the inert gas is filled, where the inert gas is filled, that part becomes hollow from inside. Now let, let, uh, let us see this full process visually. Looking at this animation, we can find out how this process happens. Again, we feed the polypropylene material from the hopper and then the material goes into the mold. The top there is one channel from which the inert gas is being pushed into the mold, further making it to further making this shape to become hollow from inside. Next, we have plunger injection molding process. We have two types of plunger based injection molding process. We have vertical injection and we have horizontal injection. Unlike regular injection molding machine, these plunger based injection molding machine doesn't have a screw inside them. These plungers are connected to the hydraulic cylinder. The hydraulic cylinder is responsible for pushing the material forward and for retaking the stroke, again pushing it above. In case of horizontal injection molding, we have again hydraulic cylinder based above the barrel, which is responsible for making the plunger forward and backward. Plunger type injection molding machines are used where the product size is small and it is required for production of less number of parts. These are some of the materials which are used in injection molding process. Some of the key materials are polyethylene, polypropylene, polystyrene, nylon, etc. These are some of the application of injection molding process. Some of these machines are X-ray machine, CT scan machine, dental checkup machine, fittings for surgical, ECG machine, oximeter, and syringes for collecting blood samples. Right from nano parts to the bigger parts, we have n number of application coming out from injection molding process. Now let's let us look on injection on extrusion process. Extrusion is a continuous process in which the plastic material in the form of granules or powder is continuously fed into the hopper. This is the hopper. The material is gradually melted by the mechanical energy generated by turning screws and by the action of heat and pressure arranged inside the barrel. The molten material inside the barrel with the action of screw rotation is then forced into the die. This is our die. The molten material which comes out of the die in extrusion process is called extruded. 
so the green color material which you see we can call it as extruded the extruded the extruded then goes into the vacuum sizing unit once the plastic melt and take its shape they be in the vacuum sizing unit the work of vacuum sizing unit is to hold the same dimension until it gets totally solidified by the effect of cooling the extruded then goes into the cooling chamber this is our cooling chamber the work of cooling chamber is to totally remove the heat then the extruded goes into the puller roller the work of puller roller is to pull the extruded and maintain the tension throughout the line then it goes into the fabrication die the fabrication die does the work of cutting the material into number of lengths suppose if we fix that we want the extruded length to be 6 meter or 7 meter that detail we will feed in fabrication die and this fabrication die does the work of cutting into exact shape then the material goes into the winder or a stacker where the product is stacked this extrusion process is used to produce long and lengthy plastic part like nylon threads nylon ropes wires cables pipes tubes film roll sheets etc these are the four main types of extrusion process we will see few of them in detail now we have tubing extrusion tube extrusion is a process of producing tubular continuous shape like pipes tubes ropes electrical profiles upvc profile etc you see we have a line diagram of extrusion process where you see above is the die for making tubular shape the next die is for making threads and this die is for making upvc profiles so the line diagram of this tubing extrusion remains the same it means the arrangement also is the same for tube pipes threads and profiles the only thing which keeps on changing in this process is the die because the die is only responsible for giving different shapes if we want a hollow part we have to change the die and we get the hollow part if we want solid sections like for thread and cables we will change the die and we will get the, that shape these are some of the examples of tube extrusion now we have blown film extrusion blown film extrusion is a process in which extruder sends the material out of the die with a control parameter and air pressure the molten plastic material is converted into bubble like balloon to form a thin films material comes out from the die is in cylindrical shape and it is pulled upward where from inside is used to blow and cool the molten material leading to the formation of thin films then these thin films are stitched and joined to form shopping bags and other packaging items and suitable items you see we have a hopper here from the hopper the material goes into the extruder and this is the die from the die the cylindrical shape will come out with the help of air and other units like rollers guiders this is this air bubble is blown and above there are nip rolls with the help of nip rolls these blown films are winded and then sent to the winder unit this is the arrangement of industry how the blown film is generally you see there are extruders hoppers and then we have ibc internal bubble cooling system which is responsible for cooling the bubble and at the same time maintaining the inside air pressure these are the rollers which are used to which are used to guide this films towards upward direction and this is how with the help of nip rollers these are winded and sent to the winding session on the right hand side you have a photograph where we have a die and we have bubble formation
these are some of the application of blown film extrusion we have blood infusion bag tissue freezing bag bone marrow collector bag over wrap bag etc now we have sheet extrusion plastic sheet extrusion is a technique for making flat plastic sheets from a variety of plastics and rubber resins the material comes out of the extruder and goes into the die this is our extruder and this is our die the die does the work of shaping the molten plastic material into the sheet to form a roller and then the work of maintaining the thickness throughout the process the gap between the roller and pulling force is very important factor here the rate of production and the pulling rate of the roller should be synchronized these rollers are there it means if the gap is less the sheet the sheet thickness will be less if the gap is more the sheet thickness will be more these idler rollers does the work of guiding the sheet guiding the sheet towards the puller roller the work of puller roller is to maintain the tension throughout the line then these sheets are being sent to a winding unit where the sheets will be winded thinner sheets ranging from 0.025 to 0.05 mm are used as films in packaging application sheets ranging from 0.05 to 0.1 mm are used to make disposable glasses cups and container sheets ranging from 0.1 to 1 mm are used in stationery like files and other items whereas sheets ranging from 1 mm to 3 mm are used to make plastic plate trays and disposable items on the left hand side we have a photograph of a coat hanger die which is used in sheet extrusion process next to the coat hanger die we have a arrangement where how the plastic material comes out of the die next to that is a photograph where the extruder is being rolled inside the roller this is how in industry the roller are the rollers are the application of sheet extrusion are the x-ray film the packaging for pharmaceutical the packaging for food grade and the packaging for other items if you see we have a x-ray film x-ray film is a simply plastic material coated on both side with a light sensitive silver emulsion because of the silver emulsion we get the imprints of those area where the x-ray light is unable to pass next we have blow molding process so blow molding process is a process to create hollow plastic parts by inflating a heated plastic tube until it fills the mold to form the desired shape you can see in this process extrusion extrusion machine is same as it is and then we have a we have a parison coming in between the die once the parison comes and hits the bottom of the mold then we we actually blow air with the help of blower pin to push the plastic material towards the wall of the mold in order so that the plastic material can take the shape of the mold and this is how the plastic material is able to take the shape of the mold once the shape is attained we cool the mold and this is how the plastic part is being ejected the raw material used in this process is thermoplastic in the form of small pellets or granules the hollow tube which is coming from the top of the mold till bottom of the mold is called parison you see this is our parison parts made from blow molding are plastic hollow bottles containers disposable that are available in variety shapes and sizes this is how the principle of blow molding is the molten plastic material from the extruder with the help of attachment here is the attachment which is at 90 degree comes down this parison hits the bottom of the mold once the parison hits the bottom of the mold because of the sensor the mold gets the signal and the mold is closed once the mold is closed again with the help of blow pin we blow the air into the mold because of the air the parison gets cooled and at the same time it is being pushed towards the wall of the mold because of the pressure the 
the plastic material takes the shape of the mold. Once this process completes, the mold gets open and the product is ejected. These are the four main types of blow molding process. We will see a couple of them from top. Now let me explain you the extrusion process. Extrusion process is also called as EBM in short. In extrusion blow molding, narrow neck is not possible to be manufactured. Now let us see the stages one by one. In the first stage, the plastic material is heated and it is being pushed from the between of the mold to follow the cavity and it hits to the bottom. In the second stage, the mold closes and the parison is gripped in its place. In the third, third stage, once the parison is gripped between the mold, the compressed air is blown into the parison. In the fourth stage, the parison fills the mold. In the fifth stage, whatever the extra part is there in the bottom and top, it is being trimmed. And once it is trimmed in the sixth stage, the plastic part is produced. Now let us have a look on the animation of extrusion blow molding. The parison drops. Here you see this is how the parison comes from top. Then once the parison drop, the mold gets open. This is how the blow sequence is. Yeah, from the top, the parison is dropped, the mold is closed, the blow pin is inserted, the air is blown, the secondary parts are clean, and this is how the mold is opened. This shows the full sequence of extrusion blow molding. Now we have injection blow molding. Injection blow molding is a process that happens in two stages. In injection blow molding, the neck dimensions are very important because on the next there are threads. That is why it is being done in two stages. In the first stage, the preform is made in the injection mold. In the second stage, the same preform is taken into the blow mold. In the third stage, this preform with the help of cartridge heater is heated and the mold is closed. In the fourth stage, the air is blown into the blow mold and next the mold will open and the product is eject ejected this is how the injection blow molding process is these are the some of the materials which are used in blow molding process some of the key material are hdpe high density polyethylene pvc polyvinyl chloride pet is the major element which is called polyethylene terephthalate These are some of the applications of blow molding. We have stretchers, walkers, and other devices and products. Now let us let us have a look on thermoforming process. Thermoforming is a process in which plastic sheets are forced against the die to form the shape with the action of heat and pressure. In this process, Thermoplastic sheets are used. These sheets are heated till its softening point. Different ranges of sheet thickness are used. The amount of heat required to heat these sheets till its softening point is dependent on the sheet thickness. For a thicker sheet, the more heat is required, whereas for a thinner sheet, the less heat is required. Generally, the heat is maintained between 100 to 200 degrees Celsius. This is how the animation shows with the help of thermoforming, we get our product. Mainly we have two types of thermoforming. We have vacuum forming and we have pressure forming. The vacuum forming are used where we have less number of edges and shapes. Let us have a look on stages. In the stage one, the plastic sheet is heated. In stage 2, the plastic sheet is brought above the mold. In stage 3, the vacuum are applied 
forcing the sheet to take the shape of the mold. In the third stage, we cool the mold so that the sheet will be solidified and lock the dimension. In the fifth stage, once everything is done, the plastic material is solidified, we eject the component from the mold and the part is manufactured. Similarly, we have pressure forming. So unlike vacuum forming, in pressure forming, not only the vacuum, but also the, we apply the air process. Let us see in stages. Again, the sheet is heated. In the second stage, the sheet is brought above the mold. In the third stage, the air pressure from the top and vacuum both are applied. In the fourth stage, the cooling is done. And in the fifth stage, the product is ejected from the mold. So with the help of pressure forming, the more number of shapes, contour, edges, and deep drawing is possible because here the pressure is more, the air pressure as well as vacuum is utilized. These are some of the material which we use in thermoforming process. The application of thermoforming is huge, right from packaging in healthcare, pharmaceutical and food industry, we have lot more packaging items. It has also many applications like plastic toys, aircraft windscreen, cafeteria trays and surgical disposables, etc. Before we move ahead, I would like to take another poll. Which plastic material is used for syringes? Yeah, we got our answers and the correct answer is polypropylene. Let's move ahead. Now we will look at compression molding. Compression molding is a technique principally for thermoset plastics in which the molding compound is placed in the mold cavity. Later, mold is closed. Pressure and heat is applied, causing the material to take the shape of the core and cavity by completely compressing it in order to fill it compactly. Here, pressure is being held until the thermoset material is cured. You see the down part is a cavity and the top part is core. Compression molding, there are three types of compression molding, mainly flash type, positive type, and semi-positive type. In open flash type, the charge is loaded in excess such that the flash is generated at the end of compression. As a result of the mold, the parts do not meet. The core and cavity in the flash type do not meet. As a result, this type of molding generates significant amount of waste. However, the advantage is the advantage in flash type is the flash type mold in compression molding are less prone to air traps and blistering. If I talk about the second type, which is the positive type, this type of mold requires an accurately measured charge. It does not leave space between the mold parts, core and cavity. On the mold parting line, this is the parting line. It controls the part density better, better than the flash type. It might trap the air spaces and cause blistering on the product surface. It has the least wastage and it is most convenient when the charge is made up of expensive materials. Now let us have a look on semi-positive. This type of compression molding is in between the other two methods of controlling the flash and the air traps. However, the semi-positive type combines the advantage of both. 
the charge measurement does not need to be accurate in this type however this can be excess material that they may be allowed to escape during the compression the semi positive type mold is the costliest mold among the all three this you can see the finished part coming out of this molds these are some of the materials which are used in compression molding these are some of the applications of compression process they include serine stoppers respiratory mask silicon tubes shock proof enclosures etc some of the more applications of compression molding are cabinets rubber buttons push buttons keypads silicon o-rings number buttons etc now let us have a look on rotational molding process rotation molding is a process in which hollow mold is filled with powder plastic resin you can see on the right hand side we have an animation where looking at the animation it can clearly show you what the process is here in this process when we put the plastic material into the mold the mold is closed the mold continues to rotate and the resin inside it gets melted by the action of heat because the mold is in heated condition then because of the rotation there is a centrifugal force being acted on the plastic component which allows the mold to flow inside the mold and coats the inner wall of the mold then once the coating is done from inside the mold gets open and the part is taken out of the mold generally in this rotational molding process the molds are made up of aluminum which are then cnc machine with the help of skilled technicians there are four stages in rotational molding in the first stage we fill the plastic material into the mold in second stage we heat the mold after the heating the rotation of the mold starts then it goes to a cooling unit and later it goes to a unit where we open the mold and take out the part so this is how in four stages the process happens these are some of the material which we use in rotational molding we have high density polyethylene linear low density polyethylene polycarbonate polypropylene etc these are some of the application of rotational molding here is the list of our services we can help with material selection we have a huge plastic material database which we use for material selection for any of the healthcare product while selecting the material for healthcare domain details on biocompatibility cleanability rohas compliance and other important aspects are also covered prototyping we have a dedicated team of product designers who will help you to develop concepts that are manufacturable cost effective and can meet your product requirement plastic product design we know and understand the importance of good product design for us plastic product design is multidisciplinary professional task it blends the understanding of our customer needs the enhance the enhancement of their experience regarding the functionality needs and transformation of that idea into something tangible made up of plastics plastic flow analysis with the help of plastic flow analysis we can see how the product is filled with the molten plastic material under the mold this plastic flow analysis gives us the idea that the product we have designed is actually moldable or not if it is moldable how we can improve it further if not then what all changes we can make to make it moldable looking at these details we suggest changes in product design and process parameters to optimize the product mold design we also design product molds 
and suggest the best getting and position in component which will maximize the moldability and at the same time it is cost effective process optimization we optimize process right from compounding pre-drying material mixing technique to its final processing this includes increasing strength of product optimizing the barrel temperature reducing the barrel residence time improving surface gloss increasing the product stiffness or flexibility and optimizing the cycle time troubleshooting of issues related to plastic mold process right from the injection molding extrusion process blow molding or any other plastic process methods we have an expert team this expert team is really doing very good job generally these are the issues like dimensional issues dimensional mismatch fitment issues weld line sink mark shrinkage surface roughness surface blemishes air bubbles short shot breaking jetting etc this is all for today i see there are few questions coming in we will respond to them via email for any other further queries you can contact us contact details are on the screen we would be happy to help you with any of your product designs development prototyping optimization and troubleshooting we use cutting edge technology and techniques for our tools and our work please note that a recorded version of this webinar will be available on our website in a week time or from now we will also send you an email with a link on your registered email id to access the webinar i would like to thank you for your time have a good day ahead